Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here for Forza Motorsport 7 back with a new league on the channel. Now for those of you that have been keeping up with this channel recently you'll know that we recently got back in to the LCR Formula 4 league and my teammate in that series CK actually races in a couple of different leagues as well. Now he, he'd sort of been asking me for the last couple of months to try and join this world touring car league that he does called OMA. Now I sort of, you know, sort of said, yeah, no, definitely, depending on when it is, everything like that. And on Monday, the new season did begin. So we're going to be racing in the OMA World Touring Car Championship over the course of the next couple of months. In the background is just my fastest lap from qualifying. Now, I'm actually going to try a little bit of a different style for this series. Now, the race weekend for these is pretty simple. You've got a five, six lap qualifying session, depending on the circuit that we're heading to. And then three roughly 20 to 25 minute races over the course of the night. Now, usually what I've done in the past is obviously um, just, you know, put all three races or both races or whatever into a bundle. And that has been the video. Now, for this series, based on just the complete amount of action that we have from round one of this series here at Miguelo, I'm probably going to struggle to do that. I mean, this video alone would have been upwards of 40 minutes long. So I'm actually going to split these videos up. The first one is obviously just going to be qualifying and the first race. The second one is then obviously going to be race two. And then the third one is going to be race three. So it's probably going to be sort of a lot more videos, but they're still only going to be hopefully about 10 to 15 minutes long, depending on the amount of action that we get over the course of the races. Now, as well for this series, there's actually ballast, which I'm quite intrigued to see how well we'll fare with that, obviously, if we end up with any. Now, the balance basically works top three from race one, get balance for race two, and then top three from race two, get balance for race three. And there's also a, a honestly, I'm still not 100% sure, a bit of a system for the reverse grid as well. So there's sort of, obviously, everyone starts lower down the order as well, if you've been more successful and everything like that. It's we'll, we'll certainly learn it, hopefully, over time. But yeah, for the first round of the season, though, qualifying and the first race there is no ballast heading into the second round and then every round on the top three in the championship will have ballast for qualifying and then the first race as well so certainly going to make it very very interesting but that was my fastest qualifying lap and actually really really happy with that in the end we managed to sneak down into the 56s there i was the only person to do so so we do find ourselves on pole position for my debut race in oma because you're one minute 56.957 we did barely sneak in but we were just ahead of Brandy and CK there up in P... Oh, sorry, CK, and then it was uh, Blackburn. No, Brandy did, in fact, set his lap. I, I knew I wasn't mistaken uh, there in the end of the day. But getting ready then on the end of the formation lap, it is obviously a standing start for all of the races in this championship. Brandy there just alongside me. I didn't technically have a teammate for this. We sort of had four of us that were racing. Brandy and CK were teammates, and then we also have myself and JSP, uh, JSB Bradley as well who we weren't teammates and now we are it's all a little bit strange but i mean we'll, we'll take it i've now got a teammate for this series as well i was meant to be going as a privateer but yeah really really looking forward to this series but unfortunately that is not going to help us out we, for we forgot to use the clutch uh trying to reverse back onto the grid there so that's going to give us a bit of transmission damage luckily obviously like i said we, d we are running clutch uh so that shouldn't affect us too much in the first race of the night but we'll wait and see None of the less then. We're getting ready then on the grid. I think the lights out is going to be at 3 minutes 45 seconds for our very first race in OMA. Obviously starting on the pole. We would like to take the win, but we'll wait and see about that. 12 laps ahead of us around this Miguelo circuit there. And we are now ready on the grid. The five lights are coming on now and it is 3.45 on the clock. It is lights out and away we a wheel spin. And that was one thing that I completely forgot to check about with this car. Is how on earth do you launch it there? You can see... Ashley and Brandy get straight around the outside before we even get down towards Turn 1 there. That was not the start that I needed. They're going to go side by side in towards the first corner there. We're going to try and keep it up the inside. Cold brakes, cold tyres, everything like that. So we do get back up the inside of Ash through T1 there. And round the outside in towards T2. Are we going to potentially be able to make this work? We should be able to. We have got the inside for a T3 there. But he's going to try and keep it there over the curbs we go. And yeah, you can see just how quick that Chevy is on acceleration there now there are quite a few cars in this league as you probably expect from a world touring car series there as we do get right around the outside of ash there and yeah back up into p2 of the race he thinks about having a look up the inside but not down the hill it's just going to be a very very unopportunistic move 
to try and get up the inside through there. But yeah, we have got the Audi, which is very good top end. You know, a decent all-rounder, but it's definitely its key focus is the top end. A little bit better through the corners as well than most of the other front-wheel drives. This is the NGTC BTCC spec car. Uh, you've obviously got the Chevy there as well. A little bit worse through the corners, but the acceleration on that thing is absolutely monstrous out of the corners. It, you, nothing can keep up with that thing out of the turns. There's also the Audi TCR car, the LMS version, as well, like you get on iRacing. That is, again, quite an all-rounder. I think it lacks a little bit of what we have on the straights, but just a bit better on the acceleration and through the corners. And then we've also got a couple of BMWs who, like you'd probably expect, much better tyre wear. And then obviously a bit better through the corners, you know, a little, just a bit more flexible being rear-wheel drive. And then last but not least, we have got a Honda Civic as well here, which is a bit more like the Chevy, to be honest. They're quite similar on this game, from at least from past experience, from what I know. So that thing, again, has got decent acceleration, but just struggles a little bit more through the corners. Very, very prone to a bit more understeer than things like the Audi as well, which is a bit weird, obviously, because it's got a shorter wheelbase. But we'll gloss over that as we're now all over the back. Of Brandy as we head on to lap two here, and I was hoping we could try and sneak past him as soon as possible here. Because you know, with this transmission damage, I wasn't sure how much time it was going to cost us in the long run. Perhaps you know, we'd just been able to get it to pace quite quickly, and everyone else was still a little bit rusty. But in all honesty, it, yeah, it wasn't really costing us anything in this race. There, it does a lot more obviously with normal manual, but with clutch, obviously, you sort of have full control over it anyway, so that the shift times don't really take effect at the end of the day. There's you can see almost pushing him up the hill there. He's just going to go a little bit too hot at towards the top of the hill there. We're going to be able to have a look up the inside later on the brakes, get the car slooped as uh, you know, just caught back in even I should say on the inside curves zone. Yeah, we now move ourselves up into the lead of the race there. But Brand is still going to try to look back around the outside as we head in towards the next couple of corners there. Is he going to be able to make that move work? Well, hopefully, you know, just going to be able to get the good run through the corners there. Ash is going to try and follow up the inside there, but he can't make it work that time around. And yeah, Brandy and myself do swap places, but we do hold on to the 1-2 in this race there. And like I said, myself, Brandy, and CK, as well as JSB, are probably, you know, going to be trying to look after each other in this series. Obviously, I'm new to this all. These guys have all raced here a couple of seasons in the past. So hopefully, you know, I, I can learn the ropes and get on the pace quite nicely as well. If you can see coming out the final couple of quarters, though, yeah, are now up into the lead of this race. And you can see uh, Brandy is all, well, you've got Ash, sorry, all over the back of him. As we head on to lap three of this race, the third racing lap, even I should say, 37-3 though, considering obviously that's all that squabbling. It's not too bad in this race. We're actually going to ride on board with my fastest lap from the whole race evening. And you can see lap eight. We've already built up a little bit of advantage. Now you can see Ash is up to second there. He's meant to be. I think he's won this title a couple of times. CK actually managed to win it last season, but Ash is certainly one to watch as well. Uh, CK up into third, and then Brandy as well. Drop down ever so slightly into fourth place, but you know, they're all still very, very tightly bunched at the moment here. Yeah, this was my fastest lap of the evening. Miguel was a bit of a weird circuit for these cars, uh, especially the front wheel drives. The BMW probably doesn't struggle as much in terms of just the raw precision that you need around here. It is very much obviously a one mind track, you know, it's a motorbike track at the end of the day. It doesn't personally, to me, I think Forza's curbs don't really help, but it doesn't really sort of suit cars as well. Uh, you know, particularly, especially sort of front wheel drive, you really just obviously find yourself trying to balance the throttle so much, trying to avoid the understeer as best as possible here. And, you know, this back half of the lap is really where all your time is won or lost here. You've really got to try and get a bit lucky, in all honesty, over the curbs there. We got incredibly lucky that time when we actually clipped the outside curb, which you don't want to do. And that completely turned us right the way through the next couple of corners. And you can see getting the car nice and tidy right the way through, pushing right to the limits. All the way through there as we head now down in towards the final few corners of the lap here. And yeah, we built up a good few second, a uh, few tenths of a margin even, I should say, just through that sector of the track alone there. And yeah, that really does go to show, you know, when you get it right, this car is incredibly quick. It has actually been bopped back a bit heading into this season. Uh, you know, CK was saying it was a little bit better last championship, but still at the moment it seems to be, you know, up to scratch as well. I, I like to think, you know, we're all pretty quick. As well on Forza VA. You can see coming down in towards the final couple of corners of the lap though. It's been a pretty tidy lap. There was definitely a couple more tents to find. I personally felt, you know, if you absolutely nailed a lap round here, you could probably get down into the 45s in or uh, sorry, the 55s even I should say. But yeah, this was going to be my fastest lap of the evening. It's a 1 minute uh, 56 point four there. It was only about a tenth of my PB. I'd done sort of a low uh, 56.4 
earlier on, and that was a 56.49. You can see heading on to the final lap, though, of the race that Ash still just in front of CK there, until unfortunately CK would disconnect with just a few corners to go of the race there. That was absolutely gutting for him to kick off the championship there. Really not what he needed as we head down through the final couple of corners, though, of the race there. Commiser commiserations to CK. No, it was looking like him and Ash were going to have a really close battle down towards the line there. But for me, at the final corner, though, it is the race victory in the opening round of the season. They're really, really happy to kick off our season in style there. And yet a 1 minute 56.4 means we do pick up a bonus point as well for that fastest lap at the end of the day. You can see most of the guys sort of round the low, you know, see high 46, uh, high 56s, low 57s, everything like that there. So yeah, really, really good race at the end of the day. That We did win by five and a half seconds in the end as well. And that'll mean obviously we've got the success ballast, uh, success ballast and we will be starting a little bit further down the order ready for the second race of the night there. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Do make sure you get yourself subscribed if you're new around here as well. We're almost at 250 subscribers on this channel. Not not quite the F1 channel numbers, but still, you know, everything does help. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure, like I said, you do get yourself subscribed. There's CK down at the rear of the field there. A gutting way to end the first race of the night, but there's certainly a lot of opportunities. I mean, it's a 30-race championship. It's certainly not all over in the opening round of the first week there. But yeah, I will hopefully see you guys next time for race two, success ballast, and we'll be starting a little bit further down the field. You don't want to miss it.